Hello, my name is Connor, otherwise known as Downloadable Connor or DLC, and today is the first of what I hope to be a weekly podcast in where I discuss all the different goings ons of geek culture, gaming news, uh, movie stuff, you know, uh, Disney Plus, Marvel shows, all the stuff I'm obsessed with, and and more. Honestly, it's just like a podcast to discuss these things, and um, especially so like lots of spoilers will be involved, but also uh, I, I want to do this in this format because the one, the unscripted format seems really nice, and I can just discuss what I want to discuss in a good order that I want us to do without kind of needing to, you know, follow a script and have to, um, you know, worry about that kind of stuff. When it comes, and, you know, that may think it might be a little contrary to my attempts at wanting to be a voiceover artist, but usually when I do voiceover stuff, the script is not written by me. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little bit easier to, like, not be super critical of myself and try to, like, fake that. So, um, yeah. So, yes, uh, yes, Bobbard, yes, it is a, well, we're not streaming WandaVision. We are, I have already seen the episode. I watched it as soon as it went up, you know, as, as much, as fast as I could when Disney Plus was crashing like a freaking, <laughs> like, you know, like a family after Thanksgiving. Like, it, it's, uh, but I wanted to discuss the finale. I wanted to discuss the show as a whole and how much I loved it. That's, you know big bit of a very vague summary there and and how i believe it's going to affect the marvel universe forward how it's going to connect with other shows etc and uh and just you know and then also start talking about some gaming news so the whole framework for this podcast because of the way this year is working the framework for this podcast is essentially going to hopefully be discussing Disney Plus shows, all the Disney Plus shows, the Marvel stuff, um, and all the movies if they start coming out due to the pandemic, uh, potentially not pushing them back anymore. Uh, um, hopefully, you know, vaccine distribution maybe gets to a point that movies can start going back to normal again, but eh, we'll see. I don't know. I want to see Black Widow really bad, but... Regardless, um, yeah, it'll be like weekly discussions of each episode. You know, we can theorize a little bit, talk about how theorizing potentially can be the downfall of things like this. We'll get into that later. And uh, and potentially just try to, like, you know, just have a fun little discussion about it. And then after that, we can t after we kind of catch ourselves up on all the you know, all the current Marvel stuff or whatever we're talking about. Like, you know, it could be something we just watched that week. Like, I mean, there's more stuff coming than just Marvel, but this year is going to be primarily Marvel. So, um, so yeah, so we're ba and, and because of that, and then after that, so we'll start, we'll talk about gaming news because there's plenty, you know, of gaming news coming out. Obviously 2020 had its ups and lows when it came to gaming. Um, but there's always plenty of news to talk about. Especially, you know, in this really interesting time where pandemic, the pandemic is pushing back development on many games and, and etc. So we have a lot to talk about. And um, I think it's this is going to be really fun. I want to try to do this regularly, hopefully on Saturdays, potentially, hopefully a little bit earlier on Saturdays. Today, I started a little bit late just because I had some stuff I needed to get done. And it was, it was just, you know, I had to get it done. And then I could start, you know, as soon as I could. But so, like I said, today will be less gaming and more, you know, uh, dis discussion, podcasty, all the fun stuff. And I like to call it the downloadable cast. I, I made a couple similar-esque videos. Similar-esque? Why do I do that? I say that word too much. Esque. But um, I made a couple similar videos on my YouTube channel. And I've, I've always wanted to do more of them, but I just wasn't sure of the format I could do them or the, like, regular way, or, like, you know, just a, you know, better way that I can handle it a little bit easier. Um, but I think I've basically got it down, and I'm hoping that this becomes a regular thing. So, um, if you're watching right now, or if you're watching from the future, thank you for coming in. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm ho These will all be going up on YouTube as after, uh, as soon as I can get them 
uh, just a little cut down and made sure that everything is, um, make sure that every, you know, everything is clean and everything is good. But, and I don't know if, and here's the thing, because this is the first version of this podcast, the format can change the, um, I could potentially upload the stream on, or I could potentially upload this podcast in a pure audio format or a visual format as well. Um, it really just depends on how, what works out, what is the easiest or what is the most interesting. I think the visual format isn't a bad idea because of being able to showcase things that I'm discussing uh, on the stream itself and be able to show that video afterwards. Um, but it really is just... Uh, it's very We're very malleable right now. We're, we're very flexible. Uh, things can change as they, you know, as, as we evolve. But regardless, I'm super excited, and I really am excited to, to try to do this. So I'm going to work on, you know, my looking at the camera a little bit more and trying to figure out every, the whole format of what I'm trying to do. I'm going to take a sip of water. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, with that in mind, I'm going to try to get started, but really quick, <laughs> I am going to add something onto the screen. Uh let me see. Um <clears throat> because I want to like I want to make sure that people are aware that oh hey, thanks for the follow, dude. I really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, sorry if I'm hitting my mic. I'm, like, I'm still working on my setup a little bit. Um, let's see. I think this is right. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I really appreciate the follow. And so we're going to, we're going to get started in just a minute. I'm going to put up on the screen a spoiler warning for, for just basically, you know, um, <laughs> just, you know, we're going to be talking WandaVision spoilers, and I'm trying to give as much time as possible if anyone else wants to come in just to make sure that they know about this and that they know that there's going to be spoilers dis discussing the show if they haven't seen it yet. I keep hitting my mic stand. This is really annoying. i got to figure out how to fix this. <laughs> I can probably push it back a little bit just to make it a little better for myself. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so, so hopefully we'll be able to, like, you know, people who haven't seen the show yet haven't seen the finale you know don't come in and me talking about everything happened this character died or whatever like no i'm gonna make sure uh, i want people to be aware because i hate when things are spoiled for me so i hate spoiling things for other people even you know unintentionally or accidentally and <clears throat> so i try to be wary of my words and be wary of what I'm saying, especially, you know, when it comes to a video game I really like, or a movie or TV show, like, I, I, I don't even try to hint at things, especially if they're super significant when it comes to spoilers. So, with that in mind, we're gonna get started, and <clears throat> so, our first topic of discussion today, obviously, is the cultural phenomenon that was WandaVision, Disney's next cultural phenomenon after Mandalorian, you know... <laughs> So, and as much as, you know, having that, <sighs> all right, I want to say, I already have a spoiler tag on the stream, so it really shouldn't be that big of a deal if I talk about Mandalorian spoilers, because if you're really interested in seeing Mandalorian, and you're interested in watching this podcast, or listening to this podcast, you probably have seen the show already, and aren't, are wary of spoilers, or it was already spoiled for you because of Twitter, because Twitter sucks, and I should probably use it less. But <clears throat> regardless, it's a lot of fun. So here we go. We're talking about WandaVision. So first, before we get into the finale itself, I just want to talk about the show in general and how much, like, how much I just loved it. Like, it. if this is the kind of quality that we can, that we are going to be able to come to expect of the Disney Plus Marvel shows then we are in for a fantastic year. It is going to be an absolute delight of a year. <clears throat> because basically every single week of this year is going to be Marvel content with like a couple bye weeks. 
because so like next Friday, we don't have anything else. But the Friday after that is March 19th, which is when Falcon and Winter Soldier starts. So that is going to be amazing. And I'm super excited. That one's actually only going to be six episodes, but they're long episodes, like hour long, and they're super action packed. So it's definitely a way different format than WandaVision. But I can understand you can understand why these shows have the super high budgets that they do. It's so it's because like they're really putting in a ton of work and they're making these shows. They're making these shows as alternatives to movies since like these are stories that sh could be and should be told in a rather in a lengthier format in a more in a format that allows deeper diving into these characters that maybe didn't get the full development that you know they they did uh they had in the movies like you know we love we freaking love uh anthony mackie as falcon and and uh sebastian stan as winter soldier so like because they're but like because they're kind of like side characters and like you know they were like Cap's best friends and they're and his brothers in arms. Um, obviously the story's mostly focused on Cap, so uh, we got a lot of development on Bucky, but you know we can still get more development on Falcon just because he's awesome, and we definitely need more on him. And I can't wait to see how this show turns out. But anyway, we're talking about Wandavision, so <clears throat> one more water sip. Got to keep myself hydrated, man. Um, <clears throat> so, so starting from the beginning of WandaVision, we knew way, way, way back when, when all of these, like, Disney Plus shows were out, uh, were, were, were announced that, like, you know, it's going to be a different, like, the evolution of the MCU is going to change a lot, and Phase 4 is going to be a big departure from a lot of what they been doing they're gonna eventually you know go back and team up movies but there's a lot of just kind of solitary projects some uh interconnected but solitary projects that they're working on to build characters up uh introduce new ones etc and uh and so like when wandavision was announced we were just like uh we're fine one we're finally getting a show about scarlet witch we're getting a show about vision even though He's dead. <laughs> like, he died in Infinity War and didn't come back in Endgame because Thanos straight up killed him. He didn't snap him. Um, and he, and like, and so we were all blown away by the fact that, like, huh, so how is this going to work? And then we saw, like, our first images. And, like, er, the first, um, I remember the first clues, the first clues we got regarding all of the you know, regarding at least specifically WandaVision in general, was it's going to have, like, a 50s aesthetic, which it was, like, the first de detail we got. Like, I, I, we didn't know that at first it was going to be some, like, through the generations, um, uh, like, of, of sitcoms and, like, you know, doing all that. And, and then, you know, as we got more pictures, it's like we saw them, you know, sitting together in like the sitcom setting. And, and then we got more and more about how the show is, is all about, uh, Wanda and, and potentially, you know, how she may have brought Vision back somehow and, uh, why they're back. Like, and then there's like a mystery unfolding and each episode represents a different history, uh, or represents a different generation of sitcom throughout the decades. And... <clears throat> And it's like, huh, this is way different than Mar anything Marvel has done. Like, it is, you know, it's not your standard, uh, oh no, big villain, let's go in and beat the guy and punch, punch, and buildings, destruction, and, and you know, <laughs> Superman fights, etc. Um, <clears throat> uh, and so, obviously, you know, if we've seen the finale, we get, we sort of, we still sort of get that, but... Um, you know, because it's superheroes, we gotta have at least a little bit of something. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and, um, it, and it, so, like, when we finally got the show and it was rolling out weekly, like, the, it, it blew my mind how different it was, but also how well it was made. Like, Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany 
are ridiculously good actors. Like, holy crap. Like, they were able... Like, they they mixed the idea of being in the sitcom world where the world that you are living in literally abides by sitcom rules where anything can happen situations are solved within 30 minutes like um and you know like the happy go lucky things of of you know suburban families and stuff like that like everything that like a lot of these sitcoms that a lot of people grew up on and you know they still go on to this day even though they're still evolving and and with each episode they not only did a perfect representation of the sitcoms of the times but also were able to blend in subtly at first and then you know more and more and more escalating as the show went on uh the mystery of the show itself of WandaVision and what is going on here and and like why is this happening why are we in this sitcom verse and then like you know we get the comment in episode four from jimmy woo like it's like so the universe created a sitcom starring two avengers and it's like what (laughs) and that's basically you know everyone's reaction when it was first announced and uh so like it's just like in each episode just like delve deeper and deeper into the mystery and the uh and um and just you know like what you know what was happening and and how it all started and um what exactly wanda herself was doing like we you know it we we fit we called it from the start but like but uh because of the loose connections to like you know wanda uh scarlet witch storylines from the comics and you know like the house of m storyline being like alluded to and um and stuff like that but it was still had its own mcu twist because the mcu obviously doesn't do everything exactly from the comics it does a lot of things very uh you know it does it in their own way and that's perfectly fine because if you make a story just exactly what the comic is then there's not going to be any surprises like that's almost the problem where uh like with like movies made from books in general because it's like you need to make it so that it's exactly as written in the book maybe with some light changes to better suit the screen format or or something like that but like uh, but at least stay truthful to the book and stay uh, honorable to, you know, what the story is trying to tell and, and everything like that. So, But with comic books, it's way more freedom because, like, there's all these possibilities and there's all these, um, like, th- these, like, uh, like, literally they just explain the possibility through the multiverse theory. And, like, because, you know, oh oh, this could happen, but it's just in another universe. Like, it's like, because, like, the multiverse theory is all about how every single choice we make in life, um, the opposite choice splits off and becomes its own universe. And, like, so it's it's really, so it's really cool. And I see your comment, uh, Bobbert. Thank you so much. Do you have any theories? Uh, we're going to get to that once I discuss more of the uh finale in general and wandavision in general um but right now i'm kind of just discuss or the plot points of wandavision um but yeah we'll get to that and um so like just week to week regardless of you know the plot and how it was being uh portrayed and how like and 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 you know and and regardless of how things were coming about and all the information was coming out like i just want to take the time to appreciate uh how amazing that show was for doing something different for taking the internet by storm for taking marvel fans who may not have even seen endgame and just taking them for a ride with these characters and like i uh, and just you know like just really giving us something unique and special and you know it so much credit to freaking um to elizabeth olsen and paul bettany and katherine hahn for literally just killing their roles in the absolute greatest fashion like it couldn't have been more perfect in my eyes 
like some people were disappointed in the finale, but I think, but that goes into something that we can talk about in a minute. Um, so, uh, and the one thing I want to discuss before we really, really, really get into the plot points is how the show does grief. Like this, this isn't like, you know, this isn't your standard TV show. This isn't your standard, uh, or, okay, this isn't your standard um, Marvel content. This is not your standard movie. This isn't, like, you know, okay, superhero, potentially an origin story, uh, you know, gets their powers or becomes the hero that they're meant to be and has to rise up to fight the rising threat, Um and, you know, a lot of the times the movies do it, it's like, oh, the villain's a reflection of the hero in the dark. But, like, it, it's just, you know, and that's fun. The stories are really great, and depending on how they're done, they can be done really well, they can be done pretty bad. But it just depends on, you know, how you do it. Depends on execution. And we get a little bit of that in WandaVision with, um, uh, with, with, with Scarlet Witch and Agatha Harkness. But it's more... Like, but the story is more than that. Like, and they show it to be more than that. <clears throat> Water sit. <laughs> the sh this show is a... It's almost like a uh, character study on grief. It, it's, it's almost like the show is... Um, you know what? Now that I think about it, it's kind of like the show... It's kind of like the MCU's version of taking us through the grief process after everything that changed with Endgame itself. Like, everything that changed with Infinity War and Endgame, and how Phase 3 ending changed the Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe forever. We lost Tony Stark. Captain America might still be alive, but he is officially retired uh, from the Captain America role. Um, and he ended up growing old with Peggy, but then returning to the proper, uh, MCU universe after living his life out with Peggy. And, um, and then, like, and then we all, we lost Black Widow when she sacrificed herself in order for them to get the Soul Stone. And, um, <clears throat> we lost Vision when Thanos killed him. We, we lost, like... And there are just so many things that happened, and like, um, in the, in the context of the story, and it's really crazy to imagine how, um, like, you know, how all of this is going to affect the future, um, which is because, and and so, Wandavision is kind of almost like being like the first thing that we're seeing of Phase Four. Uh, by the way, Far From Home is not Phase 4. Far From Home is the Phase 3 epilogue movie, if you're curious. Uh, <laughs> but basically, um, it is a... I feel like WandaVision is essentially forcing the fan base of the MCU to go through a grieving period. Like, we've already gone through kind of like our own grieving periods with... Um, with the characters because, you know, Endgame came out in 2019 and then 2020 happened and we didn't get any Marvel content whatsoever. So, like, uh, because everything got pushed back, all the filming got pushed back, we were supposed to get all this, like, last year. So, it's interesting to see how, um, how they progressed in the real world as well as, you know, how the story's progressing. But, with that, it's just cool to see how WandaVision kind of, like, took us on this journey through grief. Because it's Wanda. She has gone through some of the most gruesome things in this in this universe. Like, you know, all the characters in the show, or all the characters in this, you know, collection of movies and shows have, um, have gone through unimaginable things. But, like, but Wanda lost everything. Like, she lost, she lost her parents, uh, in, you know, in civil wars in Sokovia, she lost, she lost Quicksilver during the battle against Ultron, her brother, 
and or Ultron, Ultron's not her brother, Quicksilver's her brother. She lost her brother Quicksilver during during the battle with Ultron. She lost who essentially was becoming the love of her life, Vision, during Infinity War, after the fact that she had was forced to sacrifice Vision herself to potentially prevent Thanos from getting the last stone. And then Thanos was like, nah, I'm good. Let's rewind this, and I'm going to take the Mind Stone myself. So, she lost Vision twice. <laughs> and, like, like twice in, like, in, in, like, a fraction of a minute. Like, and, uh, so she has gone through, like, so much pain in her life, and how, like, and... And like the fact, and so the fact that her grief is finally like coming to fruition like this in in the MCU is almost like our own uh our own grief. It's a it's a it is a character study and a analysis on grief and the stages of grief. There's like. Uh, so what are the stages of grief? I believe it's like. It's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then acceptance, I believe. I think, and I believe those are the five steps in order. And, um, and so we kind of see Wanda go through all of this. We, in a way, like, we see her experience all of these things. Uh, and even then after we get to what appears to be an acceptance phase, we still see her kind of looking back. And and that's what we'll get into the story in a little bit. So, um, and so, like, so, like, we see her, you know, the first couple episodes when we're completely in the sitcom verse and there's next to no acknowledgement of the outside world besides like you know the stings breaking in like Wu, jimmy Wu breaking in via the radio um and like the beekeeper and stuff but uh but it's in her this is her world she's in denial she's literally created her own world of denial and then like and anyone anytime anyone tries to upset that or just or you know disrupt that anger and then when things are trying to, uh, and then, you know, when things are starting to fall apart, she's trying, she's bargaining. She's trying to figure out, oh, I can fix this. I, I, I can fix this. I can do what I need to do. And then, like, we see in the one episode that's based off of, like, the 2000s sitcoms, like, with Modern Family and stuff, um, we get, you know, like, a little hint at at her depression and, like, you know, the fact that she's dealing with these things, but like just not in a healthy way and um so it's really cool and like you know then we get acceptance at the end when she finally lets the hex go but and so that's so i so i just really wanted to talk about that i wanted to get that out i wanted to say how amazing this show was in an analysis and a walkthrough of the stages of grief and how this show is more than a superhero show it is like it is so artfully done and like and how like and and just so loving and so beautifully made like i nearly teared up at the end of the finale like it it, it was you know it, it was just so beautiful like and it, it was like yeah so it was, it was a lot to process so uh yeah and so that's what I wanted to talk about in regards to that. So now I know I put it off for a little bit. We're going to get into the actual discussion of the plot. So basic uh, discussion of the plot of the show. So first we've got, you know, so the first two episodes, we have a sitcom-esque universe that Wanda and Vision are apparently living in. They're hiding their powers in this suburban environment, like very bewitched, and um, and and but they're also just blending in. They're living their lives as they're a suburban loving couple trying to fit in with the rest of the world. 
also having powers and hiding that, you know, and and it's super cool, but we get we only get little hints, little hints that something is weird here. Like we all know something was weird from from the start, but the story doesn't let up on it until the end of episode three, and that is a bold thing to do. That is extremely bold to start your story, and for three episodes have literally nothing to do with why is this happening, what is going on, like. <laughs> It just is. And I think it was a perfect way to start the show because it was like we needed to be in Wanda's environment. We needed to understand uh, what was happening. So. <clears throat> uh, and then so we get episode three and that's when a big plot point happens, like, you know, straight ripped out of the comics. Wanda somehow creates or, um, you know. Yeah, somehow creates her, her children, her children from the comics, who eventually become the superhero kids, Wiccan and Speed, who get uh, her and her brother's powers. <laughs> and the comic, and the funny thing is that, like, you know, why did she get her, why did he get her uncle's powers rather than Vision's? Because it's like, it's like, it, that that's a big mutant thing in the comics, and that's very, you know, I don't know, <laughs> a little weird, but regardless um uh and and so like we finally get our first little hint at the outside world at the end of that when she kicks um when she uh boots monica out of the out of the hex and you know and you know she discovers that wanda's behind it and like and uh and then we get the fourth episode which is the explanation this is like this is the expedition dump we are outside the hex um, Darcy Lewis comes back. Uh, Jimmy Woo from Ant Man comes back. All these side characters from the I I gotta love how the MCU shows are bringing back all these side characters and it, potentially redeeming them. I did not like Cat Dennings is a fine actress. She's hilarious in like you know the shows she's in, but I think her character Darcy in the Thor movies was annoying and pointless. The fact that they brought her back into this show, her character having evolved, she has taken after Jane Foster and and gotten a doctorate. She's now a doctor in astrophysics, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, you know, she, she grew. Her character evolved. And I really would like to just throw out my respect for that because I actually like the character now. She is part of the universe and actually does something. <laughs> it's not just a random side character who's there for the comedy bits, not the not the um uh the comedic relief, like it's just like she's there and she has a point, but she's also the comedic relief, which, you know, that makes a good comedic relief, like cuz like, the comedic relief can also have a solid part in the show. She kind of waned out towards the end of the show unfortunately. Uh I feel like she didn't get enough in the finale, but Regardless, I think it was awesome. Um, so then, so then after we get the whole exposition up in episode four, we get to episode five, where we start getting the mix between what's happening in the outside world versus what's happening inside the hex, and and um, like it's it's good because it's like I was worried that maybe they were gonna do like two episodes at a time where we were inside the hex. And not dealing with what's outside. And I'm glad they didn't do that. Because. Um, like it would have just been like. Oh another two weeks where we don't know anything. But like it's good that they mixed it. And they, they evolved the show. And like showed you know her reality. Starting to fall apart and everything. And um, you know. And then we see the kids start to grow up. Super fast and like. Uh, and that stuff. But. <clears throat> Regardless, um, it was super cool, and and so like we get and so we get more and more like okay, who's Agnes? Like, you know, what is she in this scenario? Because she apparently seems to be self-aware in like the fact that one is mind controlling everyone. Um, but I don't know. It's it's really it was really interesting to see how that how the show progressed and how the characters evolved and in this little like 
not necessarily even like a pocket universe, just kind of like, you know, a barrier, like a dome where everything is happening. That, but it's like separated from reality. It's really weird. But we got so much development on Wanda herself, so much development on Vision, um, you know, and some retcons when it came to Wanda, uh, being that she did technically get her powers from the Mind Stone, but maybe, but due to the fact that, um, Agatha Harkness, like, so now we're getting into the spoiler territory, like, big, big spoiler territory. Agnes being revealed as the comic book character, the witch Agatha Harkness, uh, like, telling her that she is this, um, mythologized, mythologized, yeah, mythologized being of the Scarlet Witch, almost kind of portraying her kind of like she's, like, the Phoenix Force of the comics, but... They've already straight up said, like, no, Scarlet Witch is not the Phoenix Force. Phoenix Force is different. Like, <laughs> uh, but so it's potentially uh, so it's so it's possible that the her power origin is retcon so that maybe the Mind Stone simply pushed forward or pushed out or unlocked some sort of inherent internal magical prowess or um like, uh, just because, like, you know, we just thought, okay, she got her powers from the Mind Stone, she's got, uh, telepathy, telekinesis, a little bit of mind control, um, and, like, you know, just, like, mind, um, I guess, I don't know how to describe it, just, like, you know, messing with people's minds <laughs> alongside, you know, telekinesis and energy projection and stuff like that. Um, and so, like, it was cool, and what it was really cool to see, literally see the scene where she got her powers, or where she got the where those powers came to manifestation, like the Mind Stone breaks out of Loki's spear, like, like that's crazy, and and just like opens up the yellow the Mind Stone, the yellow gem comes out, literally like floats towards Wanda, and like she just like. And she sees her future self. She sees the Scarlet Witch in the future. Like, and, um, it was just, it was mind-blowing. Like, it I, it, I couldn't believe that they did something like that. And so, like, they retconned it so, like, she got kind of, like, she saw her future a little bit. And, like, maybe she forgot it or maybe she just didn't really think much of it because she had her powers and that was it. Um... So I wonder why, but now we don't really know why Quicksilver got his powers, because if that's what happened, then why did Quicksilver survive the experiments as well? Like, if, if he is kind of just another being. That's why I was kind of hoping the show was going to permanently bring Quicksilver back in a way, um, uh, to maybe get more development on his part, because maybe we could see why the stone chose him, too. Maybe it was just because she was... You know, they're connected, they're twins, they're connected so well, like, um, and they're connected inherently that, like, uh, they could potentially just, you know, and, and tell us more about his origin. But it was Wanda's story, it was Wanda and Vision's story, so I can understand them not having, not going too much into that. And that's the thing. So that was another big thing I wanted to discuss. I wanted to talk about how theorizing is fun. But if you let it overtake you, then you're just going to be disappointed. So it's kind of like it theorizing is almost like gambling, but with your but like with your thoughts and with your expectations. When you theorize stuff like this in these shows where you think, oh, the story could go this way or could go this way. And then you internalize those thoughts. You're just going to be disappointed when your exact thought process isn't doesn't come to fruition it doesn't uh because that's not how the world works i can expect that i'm gonna walk out the door later and there's going to be a million dollars sitting on my doorstep and you know and i'll be good for the rest of my life but when i find out that it's just the paper and you know the package of <laughs> uh 
socks that I ordered because I needed new socks because all my socks have holes in them, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if the people online, like I saw people sometimes being frustrated, some pe people being frustrated with how the story concluded because their theories weren't correct. And it's like, oh, where was this character? Why wasn't this character showing up? What about the cameo? Blah, blah, blah. Like, what about the X-Men? Like, no. <laughs> This isn't your story. This is the developer's story. And also, in the context of the show, this is Wanda's story. This is Vision's story. Adding too many... Um, adding too many, uh, like, outside elements will to only detract from the show itself. Only cause problems. Only cause, um, like too many things to detract from the story they're trying to tell. And the story they were trying to tell was not just a superhero show, but also a story about grief, like we talked about. So, so like, it's basically just, like, we can't, so if you are, so when we come to theorizing, we, we, in these podcasts, we will theorize, but we won't, uh, don't expect me to think if, if 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 the show is not exactly as I theorized, then you know the show sucks. I am not that kind of person. I am not at all. Was I somewhat disappointed? I felt into it a little bit myself. Like when the show first started, I didn't want to theorize much because because it's like okay, but if that doesn't happen, then I'm gonna be disappointed. And I don't want to put myself in that mindset. And then I got caught up in, you know, the theorizing and everyone having fun and discussing what could be the... F and, oh, is this guy Mephisto? Is this guy Mephisto? Is Mephisto going to show up here? It's like, no. Like, <laughs> um, and it, it's just like... So there are a couple things I was a little bit disappointed in the finale with, but it, it's not like it changes the show for me. I think the finale was fantastic on its own. I think it was great, and I think it had a lot of awesome uh continuity uh implications because as we know from the finale agatha harkness is still alive we didn't do a whole oh wanda's power is too much and then poof, explosion dead like <clears throat> like it was a trick and i loved that i loved how they they ended up doing that because then agatha harkness can honestly because katherine hahn's a fantastic actress you don't waste katherine hahn so she can potentially be a Loki-like figure going into the MCU in the future. So, um, so getting so obviously we've talked a lot about the plot, but like so getting a little bit more into the finer details of each, uh, each episode just continues to evolve. We see the kids grow up super fast and turn into like I'm gonna guess like ten years old or so. I think because that's what they implied. <clears throat> Might need to take like a five minute break just to make sure I'm on, uh, you know, just to rest myself for a second. But um, regardless, they did a lot of awesome things for like how the, the children evolved and and like, you know, because it's like, OK, babies, babies can get annoying in TV shows and they knew that. So let's speed up the growth and it works in the context of the show just because of how unique it is and how um and and just comics because it's like comic timelines don't make any sense i love comic books their timelines don't make any sense because they started back in the freaking 50s and 60s like if if the comic books were actually moving in real time we would be in we the all the characters would be dead or 80 years old or 90 years old like uh you know, hundreds of thousands of years old, and nothing would be interesting. So they basically just imply that, oh, everything happened, but, you know, just recently, and, like, they push it more and more into the present, and, like, they, you know, there's reboots and universe restarts and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> but regardless, um, uh, so I'm, I, I kind of lost, I had a train of thought there, and it went off the rails, and then <laughs> I kind of lost my thought. But, Oh, yeah, so like the kids. So they they have this interesting way of of 
progressing them. And then like throughout the next episodes, we see that they did inherit their powers and that's, and that was really cool. So we get to see our first instances of Wicked and Speed. And because of the finale, we definitely know that Wicked and Speed are coming back. They are absolutely returning. Um, because like, you know, in the comics they do, they, you know, it's, it, it's a very dramatic story, but I don't imagine it being that closely, uh, alluded to the comics. It could be, but then again, I don't want to theorize too much, but, uh, cause I kind of want this to be more of a discussion of like the natural progression. Like we can theorize, but I kind of want it to be more like, okay, what is, you know, X and X, X and Y and happen. So by the law of, uh, I don't know what is it communicated properties like i don't remember my math like you know what does what should z be like um and and i think that the kids are definitely going to come back because you know they're forming the young avengers essentially we're getting Haley steinfeld as um kate bishop hawkeye uh we're going to be getting um shit what's her name um um, uh, Scott Lang's daughter, uh, Cassie Lang, Cassie, uh, Cassie Lang as probably a stature. Um, interesting that they recast her as that they recast the the girl from Endgame because the girl from Endgame seemed pretty good, and they ca and they recast her as um Catherine Newton, I think that's her name, and she seems like a good actress, but it just seems I don't know, it seems like kind of like an undercutting casting, but. Regardless, um, I think uh, it'll be cool to see how that all progresses. And so we know that the twins are probably going to come back. And so discussing more of the plot, episode eight was like another exposition dump. It was, but it was essentially a, a refresher course on Wanda's entire arc within the MCU. Grew up in Sokovia, lost her parents to, to the, to bombings. Um, uh, like learned English there with her brother, uh, you know, grew up, joined Hydra, uh, got experimented on by the Mind Stone, got their powers, fought the Avengers, uh, Quicksilver dies to Ultron after teaming up with the Avengers, uh, and then, uh, a civil war happens, blah, 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 she, you know, ac she accidentally kills the group of people, or the Wakandan outreach group, uh, and like, and then civil war happens to Sokovia Accords, then, uh, and, and also her relationship with Vision and how that happened, and oh my god, I didn't even mention earlier, god, how beautifully they delivered one of probably the best lines of the show. What is grief if not love persevering? And it, and because of how twisted the show is and how this is Wanda dealing with her grief, the fact that Vision, this anchor to Wanda, this positive influence in her life, does that and turns her grief on its head. Like, the fact that she, he, like, it's true. Grieving the fact that someone in our life is gone is just literally showing us how much we love them, how much we miss them, and how much that we are not going to forget them just because they are not on this plane of existence, not in this world anymore. And, um, like, so, and because love is so strong, and so, like, I just loved how they portrayed that and how vision, the artificial intelligence potentially becoming sentient, potentially gone sentient, like, being... Uh, like, you know, telling us the most human of things. And it was just so wonderfully portrayed and everything. But yeah. Uh, so, so then, yeah, obviously, so we get more of Wanda's development with her grief and her processing her grief. And then Agnes, Agatha Harkness trying to, like, push her to discover how she started the Hex and how she, um, and what her powers were. Eventually, finally coming to the point where Agnes is like, I know who you are, 
you are the mythologized, the legendary Scarlet Witch. The first time we ever got a name drop of the Scarlet Witch in the MCU after years six years it is 2015 is the first time we saw no no no. 2014 is the first time we saw wanda because she was in the end credit scene of um um uh winter soldier and obviously we only saw like a only saw like a little like a little tease of her but regardless it was um like but it's been years and years and Finally, we got the first mention of the Scarlet Witch, and then we finally get to the finale, and she fully becomes the Scarlet Witch. She has she embraces the persona. She embraces the fact that she's essentially a witch now, like like she is in the comics. And like in, in the comics, she's ve- she's very she's a mix. She's a whole big mix of a lot of things. Like she's a witch who has magical powers, but she's also a mutant. She works mostly with doctor strange and uh trained other agatha harkness in the comics like um and i think in like more recent comics she's like a teacher in like strange academy where they're teaching like magic users kind of like an ex kind of like the uh the, the school for gifted youngsters except for magic people and um but that's so it's a, that's cool in the comics and maybe we'll get some hints at that in, in multiverse of madness since she's supposed to appear in that movie or, or be a main character, uh, part of the main cast. But regardless, um, it was so cool to finally see her fully realized as the Scarlet Witch, even going so far as to giving us the little crown. Like, they didn't need to do that. They knew they didn't need to do that through all the other movies she had been in before because she did not have that crown. She had a cool cape and, you know, her cool little outfit, an awesome dope superhero outfit, but then we finally get our hint at it in episode 8, and then, oh my god, it came in all of its glory during the battle with Agatha Harkness, and it looks amazing. So, let me actually, I'm gonna see if I can pull that up. Um, give me just a second here. I am going to do something that, uh, <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Okay. Bam. You do this. Cool. And then, bam. We are going to look. Scarlet Witch costume. I just want to take a look at this costume. So I apologize if this is ju- if you're just listening to the audio, uh, but we are looking at the costume as of the show. I believe that is a good. Let's find like a full body view of it. Um, like, <clears throat> uh, costume. There it is. So. Nope, I didn't want the article to open up. Let me open this in a new tab. There we go. So, we got, like, all the details. You know, it's got the little cape. It's got it's got the, the crown headdress. Uh, it's, like, it's, it's definitely... It is an awesome mix of our comic book roots. Because, you know, the comic book roots are, you know... They're all tights, and especially for girls, it's unfortunately, you know, oh, we gotta show all the skin, and blah blah blah, and make them sexy. It's like, no, you don't need to do that. <laughs> but, that was just the comics of their time, those products of their time, but regardless. Um, like, she has, like, like the, the I, I don't know what to call it, like, the vest or whatever, like, like, you know, and, like, the cape, the cape is awesome. It's just, it's such a perfect costume for her. Like, it's such a good evolution of her costume. And I really love how it all turned out. And we really got to see Wanda starting to, like, because they said that this is the show that Wanda is going to be become the Scarlet Witch. And, like, so she, so basically, like, 
you know, we finally get like what's effect effectively her true form. And what's super cool is that she doesn't have to like change anymore. She just like her she's realizing her powers and like at the end of the show, she literally just like she's in her normal clothes to kind of like disguise herself a little bit, and then bam, phew, Thor changes her clothes into her her uh, Scarlet Witch attire. And and I just thought it was such a subtle, quick detail that was so fun. But um <laughs> but yeah so it was uh it was really cool and i so i just love how they did it and so let me talk a little bit more about the finale in general i'm going to go back to the webcam view just so like if people are coming in maybe they don't see the costume <laughs> and maybe they haven't watched it but so just being aware of that um so i haven't talked about vision much we got the tease in that end credit scene of episode eight, where uh, we officially got the MCU debut of White Vision, and it was really cool because White Vision is a major plot point in the comics as well, and like because like you know you know Vision I think dies or goes away I can't remember all the exact stories. But, um, White Vision is effectively the, like, the new Vision, and he doesn't have any connection to Wanda, doesn't have any, uh, emotions for her, doesn't have any love for her. It's basically the purely android version of Vision, and, and it was super cool to see how in the final, like, obviously, they brought, and... And it was cool, like to see how in the finale they brought they brought him in, and we got to see Vision go all at it. Like, I wish it could have been a little bit more, but like, I think besides a little bit of a fight with Ultron, we didn't get to see Vision just go toe to toe, fisticuffs, like you know, straight up Superman fighting uh, another character. And this is the first time we got that. And we got to see the two of them fight, you know, in this big air fight. Like, um, and it was really just awesome to see. And I had a, to a ton of fun just watching it. Uh, but as we saw in the finale, it appears that White Vision could potentially just become the new Vision. Become almost like a copy of of the original vision and that maybe he'll evolve again and eventually get back with Wanda because that's what we were hinted at at the end of the show. So, so to run that down within at like, you know, vision, vision and vision are fighting. And then we get what's probably like the funniest scene or kind of like the coolest and like smoothest scene in the show. That's like, so vision. Um, they they stop their fight because Vision is just like, all right, stop. Let's just talk, and that's a very Vision thing to do. Like, <laughs> um, they gave us our little, they gave us our uh, fan service and made like you know big superhero fight, like you know primal urges, like give us the fight, like that's what we wanted. Um, and then we go back. To, okay, this is Vision, um, and uh, like, uh, so Vision is Vision, and he doesn't necessarily like chaos. He's kind of like he's kind of almost like the MCU Superman, you know. Besides, like Captain Marvel at this point, because he just he's like he has all this power, but he's afraid to use it, and he's afraid to you know unleash his full wrath because he could, and he's super powerful. But so regardless, it was um so they have like this discussion, and they effectively pull the like portal um what is it uh. Um, paradoxes. Uh, they they do like the portal thing where it's like pre present a robot with a paradox and they'll they'll overload and go crazy. Um, and like so it's like new mission, refuse this mission, or or um, uh, what's another one of the fun ones? I can't remember. Or it's like this statement is false, or this sentence is false, or whatever it is. Um, and. <laughs> so and they're talking about uh 
I don't know much about mythology in that in this regard, but they talk about the ship of Theseus, which is apparently like some sort of story where, you know, there's a boat and it's called the ship of Theseus. The boat rots and, you know, the boat over time rots and how they replace the boards, they replace the planks and they fix the ship as, you know, boards rot and they take ships out, boards out. And they discuss how is it still the ship itself? despite the fact that all of the original pieces have been taken away. And then Vision also brings up the point where it's like, uh, oh, okay, but what if you took all the original pieces after the other ship has been, after the ship has been fully rebuilt, fixed all those pieces, took away the rot, and made the ship again? Is it also the ship? And it's like, and basic, and obviously, this is a direct parallel to the two Visions. So, like, we know that Vision, as we know from Episode 8, we saw that um, Wanda essentially created Vision from her inherent powers. Because she created the Hex, but then the power that came out of her to create Vision was yellow. So it represented the Mind Stone. And we got the confirmation of this uh, right at the end of the finale where... He was like, I am just a figment of the Mind Stone's power inside you. Because, because like, um, because Vision himself was uh, essentially created from and powered by the Mind Stone. So, like, basically she, basically Vision was just a creation of Wanda, and then when the Hex but only inside the Hex, and when the Hex disappeared, he disappeared with it. But because of that still, because of the connection, because of the Mind Stone being so integral to the two characters, their inherent connection, like, uh, like essentially Vision's memories and everything, like, were al al also alongside Wanda's memories, and... Uh, and like, and so, so basically like she, he, she just transferred everything into a body that she created. And because of this vision eventually, like, I think as, uh, the, the story progressed and Darcy informed vision of all of his, uh, features, like of all of all of his history, but he didn't remember any of it because he was created inside the hex and purely from Wanda herself like uh he bas she he basically like i think we're getting confirmation essentially that what that what Wanda created was effectively vision's soul and white vision uh, at being the vision that was put back together by sword by hayward um is a like basically the new vision like they put him back together and he's technically still has the memories of the original vision but they were locked to him because they were cuz those memories are also connected essentially with vision's evolution and his soul him becoming more human the fact that in civil war he accidentally shot down rody and paralyzed him because he was overwhelmed by emotion and tony stark was like how how does that even happen? And Vision's like, I don't know. I'm having emotions apparently. Like he's he's becoming human. And so he gained his soul, and effectively the mind stone and what Wanda created him out of is effectively, you know, also contains effectively Vision's soul. So then when Vision when the two visions have their like little end of battle discussion, they he's basically saying, like, we are both the vision. We are, but we are essentially, we are both, we are not, neither of us are the vision, but we are also both the vision because, you know, like, and because, you know, one of us has the vision's body, but doesn't have the vision's soul, but one of us is the soul of vision, but doesn't actually have a fully realized body once you leave the hex. So it was really cool to see the scene where he reaches out to him and, you know, and sorry, fixing my headset a little bit and like touches he touches vision white vision's head and what i'm assuming transfers his soul 
or copies, I guess, you know, in computer for, for terms, copies his soul or whatever that is this, you know, manifestation inside the hex of the Mind Stone and puts it into White Vision. And when that happens, he's like, I am Vision. And then flies away. Last we see of him. So we have no idea the whereabouts of White Vision. And that is... And that, I kind of called that. I figured that the White Vision would be the new Vision. He would return in that format. And maybe... And I think it's going to portray... I think it's going to follow the comics in ways that, like, he's going to still be more of the AI version of Vision. And maybe eventually will evolve back into the Vision that we know. Because... Um, they said at the end of the episode, it's like, what did they say? I think it was like Wanda, Wanda and Vision, I forget who said it, but like one of them was like, maybe we'll see each other again, you know, uh, and you know, it's the hex is closing in on them. And like, it, it's so, it's such a, that moment itself is so amazing and wonderful and so heartfelt. And I just loved it so much. And, uh, so I think, like, it'll be cool to see, I wonder, I don't know when the next time he's going to appear is, because it could potentially be Doctor Strange 2, but Doctor Strange 2 seems to, you know, we have to imagine that despite Wanda being a main cast member and a big part of Doctor Strange 2, the Multiverse of Madness... Uh, it's still it's still going to be focused on Doctor Strange and his combat with whatever magical dark entity he's facing, whether it be Mephisto, whether it be Nightmare, uh, something you know, something that's messing with the multiverse. We don't know. We really don't know yet. And I don't want to think too much. So he could appear in there, and it would be a side plot. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't, and we let it sit for a while because. Vision doesn't really have to do with that story. So, or at least has no, like, it's not like, oh, Vision's just going to be there. And because, like, what what purpose will he serve in the story? What purpose will he have? So I have a feeling that we're going to have to wait a little bit to see um, what fully happened with White Vision. Because he's no longer under sword. He's probably his own being, and he's probably learning to, or coming to realize who he is and maybe just in hiding and we have uh like let me just pull up the whole list of <clears throat> of all the marvel projects that are coming uh so basically <clears throat> we have okay great i found a perfect article for it for phase four so, obviously, this year, we got Black Widow. Not appearing in that, because Black Widow takes place after, right after Civil War. Shang-Chi Legend of Ten Rings has nothing to do with that. Vision's definitely not going to appear there. Eternals also takes place in the past and throughout history. Definitely not going to appear there. Spider-Man No Way Home, unlikely, because it seems like Spider-Man No Way Home is also going to be involving the multiverse in some way. With the hints that maybe Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield will be returning to their Spider-Man roles. Uh, as alternative universe Spider-Man, which will be really cool to see. I still think it might be just like a little end credit teaser, and maybe it'll be Spider-Man 4 where they show up, but heck if I know, because maybe he gets lost in another universe. That's what No Way Home means, but we don't know. We really don't know. I don't want to theorize too much because that comes at the end of this year. Uh, hopefully, as long as COVID doesn't hurt us any further, but uh thor love and thunder not gonna have anything to do vision's not gonna have anything to do with that black panther 2 we kind of are it's kind of up in the air right now just because of the unfortunate passing of chadwick boseman it's still so sad i i don't know if i'll be able to get over that for a long time just because he was the perfect actor for that role and perfect character like i wonder how they're gonna do it i hope they do it justice and i hope they do it well i trust ryan coogler um it just really it really sucks and I, I hope that his family is doing okay, and I hope that, uh, you know, we can get somewhere. So, then we have uh, Captain Marvel 2. 
And so Vision's not going to have anything to do with that because we already know that story is going to be mainly focused on um, on uh, Carol Danvers. Uh, I haven't even mentioned uh, Monica Rambo uh, as she relates to WandaVision because she got her powers. She got her freaking spectrum of light powers <laughs> like she has in the comics. Uh, you know, what her superhero name's gonna be called, Photon, Spectrum, whatever the heck she wants to call herself. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, we got those, and she's gonna appear in Captain Marvel 2. And, um, and I'm gonna come back to that in a second, because that's the next topic I want to talk about. Um, just in regards to how the, the show, uh, will lead into the future. Uh, but yeah, and then, so, Ant-Man and the Wasp 3, Quantum Mania... Uh, definitely not going to involve Vision. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is not going to have anything to do with Vision. And I still don't think this is going to be Phase 4. Uh, but Fantastic Four, I think it might be actually Phase 5 where Fantastic Four happens. But I don't know. I don't know for sure. We'll have to see. But, uh... And then, then, I think, I think it's more likely that maybe he shows up in another, I think it's more likely that White Vision shows up in something else. Maybe one of the TV shows coming up. Because, they're honestly looking at the shows right now, I don't, maybe not. I think White Vision might not even appear again until season, or phase five. I, that's what I think. Because... There's no story, there's no current story being told that he that he is going to have a major part in. Unless, like, you know, they surprise us and there's a connection of sorts in some of the other shows coming up. Um, or movies. But, obviously those are like spoiler details, so we're never going to know that until the actual content comes out. So, because WandaVision just came out. Uh, starting on the 19th, we'll have the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is six episodes. We're going to have Loki uh, starting on June 11th. Uh, and then right after that is What If, um, which is going to have nothing to do with it because it's just an animated show regarding with using all of the uh, MCU actors, but mostly in voice roles and doing What If scenarios, which I'm super excited about because that show probably looks... It's probably going to be amazing because it'll just be like, oh, we get to see what if because what if is exactly what it is. It's what if what if Peggy Carter took the super soldier serum and from what we see in the trailer, what if T'Challa was taken by Yondu instead of Peter Quill like and he became Star Lord like uh, that's going to be really cool. And then um, and then we have uh, Miss Marvel, which is a supposedly is coming out this year but we haven't had any release date information about it yet same thing with hawkeye i think hawkeye is still being fin is still finishing filming so that'll be towards the end of the year uh and then eventually in 2022 moon knight ugh, sorry moon knight she hulk the guardians of the galaxy holiday special uh also the mini series uh i am groot is going to happen. It's like a mini thing. Uh, and then like. <laughs> just like fun little things like that. Like you know. Obviously Vision is definitely not going to show up in any of those. And. Uh, and then Secret Invasion. Which is going to be amazing. Uh, which we can probably talk about in another one. I think we'll talk a lot. Something more about the future of the MCU. And its implications. And, every, and all the castings and everything. Uh, maybe next week, if I do another thing next week, um, to just see about, like, what I want to, I mean, or, you know, just to, to, to talk about the MCU's future, because, you know, we don't have a week where we're discussing, or we have a bye week where we're not discussing WandaVision or Falcon and Winter Soldier, so, um, and I think next week there's going to be, like, a behind-the-scenes thing, but, so it's not something that we really need to discuss, but, then we have Secret Invasion, Armor Wars, Iron Heart. Oh my god, all that's going to be amazing. So I'm super excited. So we don't really know what's going to happen. We don't have any hints as to the future of White Vision yet. So 
at least from the natural progression of the story and how these stories are going to play out, I don't see White Vision appearing maybe until like phase five of the next team up movie where he gets more development because he needs more development first. He can't just appear in the next movie fighting alongside new Avengers. Like we need to figure out what happened to him. Where did he go? Did he get regain the memories of the original vision? Did he gain his soul back in a way? And so we have a lot, lot to learn still. And theorizing about that is pointless because it's just, we don't know. We, we don't know. Uh, we don't know. We'll see. That's going to be the phrase for this entire year. Uh, and so so now, uh, the last topic regarding WandaVision that I want to discuss. Uh, one, I hope Jimmy Woo comes back. I hope Jimmy Woo returns and other Marvel things because he's amazing and he deserves to come back. Um, you know, because, you know, ah, shit, I, can, I, I always forget the guy's name and I feel so bad. Asian John Krasinski. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> such a bad thing to say but he's such a good actor he's such a funny actor and his evolution from ant-man and the wasp where he learns the card tricks and stuff like so great that's such an awesome evolution so um uh but yeah so we're gonna talk about and i hope darcy comes back in some way maybe she'll come back in thor just because of um jane foster becoming her own version of thor which will be interesting but we're going to talk about Monica Rambeau and her story. So she was mostly a side character in this, but she does help Wanda. She does support Wanda, despite the fact that she trapped an entire town in mind control and forced them to do her bidding and, you know, probably might need some repercussions for that. But regardless, <laughs> um, you know, cause, but she understood Wanda's grief and she understood... Um, what you know? What was happening. So we start to a summary of Monica Rambeau's arc. Obviously, we saw her first in Captain Marvel as a young Monica Rambeau, the daughter of Maria Rambeau, who is um, uh, Carol Danvers' former best or former, I guess, best friend. You know, former a co-pilot air uh, in the Air Force or um, at least co-pilot in the program, attempting to be in the program because back then. Uh, women weren't allowed to fly apparently but and, and did like the the private project or, or she did the the project that marvell was doing and so monica uh was just a young kid didn't have any powers didn't have any uh mostly just you know side character but we know that and but we figured that we were going to get her eventually when they finally announced that in wandavision that an up a grown-up version played by tiona paris is going to be cast parish Parish, Tiona Parish, that's how I say your name. I don't remember. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong. But <laughs> um So then she comes in in WandaVision. She's a member of Sword, and we learn that Maria Rambo started Sword after um sometime after the events of Captain Marvel. And which means that Sword has existed throughout essentially the entirety of the MCU completely unknown to us alongside shield so it's a retcon but where were they where were they the whole time like you know i hope we you know learn more about sword and, the, and nick fury and how he came involved in with and with it um but regardless hopefully we'll learn that and how they implement sword into the story and maybe what they were doing in the background or if they were doing anything in the background do they have any power to do anything in the background um, but so basically, so we get the adult Monica Rambo. She, we found out that she was snapped. She was, ta uh, uh, she was whisked away by Thanos, um, you know, dusted away and then comes back five years later after she was apparently in the hospital with her cancer ridden dying mother. And five years later, she comes back. Apparently her mother died two years ago. And, um, and so, like, uh, so she's like, what? Like, she's been gone for five years and, you know, found that her mother died. She's probably in a lot of stress, but eventually goes back to S.W.O.R.D. and, and then gets assigned the, uh, Westview case or with, you know, missing persons or whatever with, uh, Jimmy Woo. 
And then the whole story of WandaVision takes place. And we discover that because of Monica's... Uh, uh, because Monica forcefully went through the wall of the hex, she was sucked in at first, and then Wanda pushed her back out directly through it, and then she forced her way back in. And the second time, Darcy was like, your, your genetic structure, your DNA has been changed and altered by, by the hex. If you do this again, we don't know what's going to happen to you. And regardless, she does it again, gets through the hex, comes out into the hex with her powers from the comics. Her powers that she is able to utilize and become the different, uh, the different, uh, like, levels of the radiation spectrum. And, you know, anything from... Uh, anything from radio waves to x-rays and i don't even know if maybe gamma rays are involved but <laughs> I, i'd have to remember a little bit more about her but um sorry my nose is a little stuffed <laughs> uh and um so she comes out with her powers and then like you know we finally get to see more of them on display uh after uh like, we finally get to see him a little bit on display when she confronts Wanda. You know, she does a superhero landing, and it's like, you know... I was just like... When that first happened, I was just like... I just, I was I, I turned into Deadpool. It's like, superhero landing! You know, it's really hard on the knees. <laughs> but... But that was really cool. And so she finally has powers, just like Carol. But apparently... um, We also got to see her powers uh, displayed when Hayward tries to shoot frickin'... Apparently, Wanda and Vision and the kids, uh, where the bullets go through her and she zaps their kinetic energy and they drop, which is really cool. But um, regardless, so we're going to see more of her powers potentially in Captain Marvel 2, the secret invasion, uh, and, you know, more sword stuff potentially. So that'd be cool. Uh, regardless, we get hints that there is a dissonance between Monica and Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel. Because when Captain Marvel was brought up in conversation, and I believe it was episode four or five, she throws it off. Like it's like uh they're talking about how Wanda could have taken down Thanos alone, and she could have, honestly. And and then Cap and and Wu is like, oh but Captain Marvel came pretty close. And and then they're like uh, and then, but then she's like, well, we're not talking about Captain Marvel, we're talking about Wanda, and it's like, and they, and, uh, Darcy and Wu look at each other, and like, mm, okay. <laughs> so, we can tell that there's apparently some sort of distance, some sort of, um, what's the word? Maybe, like, a grudge held against Carol, for what reason? We can speculate, uh, but... What we can speculate it to be is potentially maybe it's been hinted at that maybe Carol's bisexual and that she dated, uh, and that she ended up starting to date Maria and maybe they broke up, had a bad breakup over time, uh, despite, you know, mostly not being on Earth or, uh, or the fact that she just was gone for 20 years and, and, you know, never came back and didn't come back to say, goodbye to her mother uh you know because they were friends for so long you know something about how carol potentially hurt them hurt her and like uh, maybe damaged their relationship a little bit but and and so like so we don't really know but we're definitely going to get that answer sometime next year so it'll be really cool to see how that progresses but um and maybe I, I, let me check. Uh, hang on. Miss Marvel Disney Plus cast. I'm going to look up the cast real quick. And, all right, so our current cast, we've got Iman, Iman Vellani as Kamala Khan, which is awesome. There's going to be, I think there's there's going to be a lot of Middle Eastern actors, which is really cool because she's a Muslim in the comics and she's a Muslim superhero. Um, 
So that's going to be really cool. I don't think they ever announced that Teona Paris is going to appear in Miss Marvel. I don't think so. She could appear. You know, new superhero swords like superheroes. We got to keep an eye on them. Um, but we don't know. Um, it's very possible because we know that in Captain Marvel 2, the cast is going to be Brie Larson, Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, Teona Paris. And Miss Marvel, the girl who's playing Miss Marvel, Iman, Iman Vellani. I don't know if I'm saying that wrong, I apologize. Um, and because, like, you know, Miss Marvel, she gets her name from because she loves Captain Marvel. And uh, so, like, basically, uh, like, we're going to probably see that evolution in that movie, and for all we know, maybe we get some, maybe Tiona Paris appears in Miss Marvel as a sword agent, you know, as usual. She also has her powers, and maybe she starts helping Miss Marvel a little bit, but um, just because of the interconnections between them, but we don't know. We'll have to see. Um, so it'll be really cool to see how that progresses, and uh, I'm very excited how that's all going to turn out. So, I think we covered a lot of stuff. Oh, oh, let's talk about, really quick, I want to make sure I finish up a thought about the twins, and I make sure I finish up a thought about Agnes. So, so first of all, I haven't mentioned the end end credit scene of the finale, um, and I haven't mentioned the other end credit scene either. Uh, so I'll talk about it since we're talking about Tiana Paris. Uh, she gets summoned into the movie theater and, like, turns out the woman talking to her is a scroll, and tells her, oh, we want to talk to you. And they're probably referring to the S.W.O.R.D. headquarters in space where Nick Fury appears to be. It's like the boss wants to talk to you, which is probably Nick Fury. Which is, you know, she's also connected to Nick Fury because of the Captain Marvel movie. So, um, so we're, somehow she's going to be going up to the S.W.O.R.D. base. And that'll be really cool to figure out. Uh, and, and so, but that was a very light teaser. It was very similar to the Far From Home ending, uh, and how Far From Home, like, Nick Fury and, and Maria Hill were being played by scrolls in the, in the, in the movie. It was really cool. Um, regardless, it was a lot, of, and, like, so that was cool. And then the end end credit scene, Wanda is apparently, she is living by herself somewhere. She is in a secluded foresty area in a cottage of sorts and you know she's just you know living a quote-unquote normal life or just you know a separate life a secluded life but in secretly in her little cabin she is reading the dark hold which i think we just got confirmation that it was yeah we did get confirmation that it was the dark hold from agnes from agatha harkness and how the dark because the dark hold is a major you know book in the comics and potentially might even still be connected to dr strange the movie because there's apparently a missing book in the library and everyone's like oh my god it's a dark hold but um we didn't get any mention of it in the movie so we don't know uh regardless so she has the dark hold which agnes apparently had i keep saying agnes echo of the harkness i mean agnes is kind of just easier to say but and there were hints that she was studying it. She was also astral projecting herself, which is, you know, the big Doctor Strange thing. And um, so she's apparently learning magic. She's learning her sorcery and everything and might be learning more of that as Doctor Strange comes into the picture. Uh, because, you know, Doctor Strange is the Sorcerer Supreme. And he got a shout out in the finale. Like, uh, Agnes is like, you are to be more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme himself. Like, which is funny, because I thought Doctor Strange was at least going to cameo in the finale as a continuation into the Multiverse of Madness. But, you know, that was one of my theories. And it's like, oh, I'm disappointed that Doctor, that Doctor Strange didn't show up. But it's Wanda's story, and I can understand why he didn't. And also, maybe he just doesn't know about it, and he doesn't get involved until... Wanda really starts messing with things like she 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 was messing with reality but it was in a bubble it wasn't like you know creating fractures in reality and everything like kind of like Doctor Strange deals with 
So it was interesting to uh, see how that turned out. And we get the hints that she is studying the Darkhold in an attempt to bring back Billy and Tommy, uh, Wiccan and Speed. And uh, so, like, it'll be really cool to see um, to see how that progresses. And uh, I definitely, yeah, I, I basically called it that her kids are going to come back somehow at some point, whether it be similar to the comic book version where her kids are literally like puppets or like fracture or shards of Mephisto's soul. And, you know, he eventually takes it back and they go away and Wanda's like, oh, my God, and goes crazy again. Uh, but. Who knows? Maybe they won't. Maybe the MCU won't go that dark because it's the MCU. But then again, this is probably one of the darker shows of the MCU so far, uh, dealing with grief and death and everything like that. But I don't know. We'll have to find out. And specifically, so she's starting. So Wanda's starting to become a witch. Like she did the rune thing. It's like you taught me how to do the runes. Ha <laughs> ha! You can't cast these spells here. And um, uh, it's like a fun little, you know, fun little nod. And fun little nod to the comics of you know Agatha Harkness being a teacher for Wanda. And also the fact that she let Agnes Agatha Harkness live. She was the villain of this show effectively. Even though Wanda was almost effectively the villain of her own show. Um, and uh, so she let Agatha Harkness live but subjected her to her mind control and put her under the spell of the fact that she's the nosy neighbor. And which is, you know, a cool way of uh, going about her story. But it also beats and gets rid of the Marvel curse of killing off their villains uh, because they had a big problem with that for a while. They killed off all their villains so they could never come back. Some of them, might, some of those might be rectified. There are still rumors that Ultron might return at some point. But regardless, um, it'll be cool to see Agnes come back. As Agatha and Agatha Harkness to come back because we don't have Loki anymore. Besides Loki is his show, but that appears to take place in another universe or maybe just the multiverse in general because Loki's going to be hot time hopping and stuff. Um, so with potentially connections to the Time Variance Authority, uh, who are kind of like the time you know Time Lords and Doctor Who or 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 um. What are they called in DC? Um, uh, what, whatever Rip Hunter is like, uh, I, don't, I don't remember what they're called, but uh, yeah. So I mean, it'll be cool to see how. So Agnes will become, hopefully, become a Loki-like figure, and maybe appear later. She gives advice. She teaches Wanda. She uh, becomes a side character, and maybe returns a little bit more to her comic book roots, where she isn't necessarily a villain in the comic she's more of just like a a powerful witch who's kind of creepy but like she's not fully a villain she has some like kind of dark moments because she's a witch i mean witches but uh in the comics she's just the caretaker of sue storm and reed richard's son franklin richards who is like super 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 powerful like ridiculously powerful and is able to watch them especially while the fantastic four are off doing their superhero duties so it's interesting and it'll be cool to see her come back and what projects she's going to appear in and maybe she'll you know turn to the good fully and help the avengers or whatever how it's going to happen we don't know but i'm really happy that agnes is uh staying and that will appear later um uh, uh, so yeah, that was a lot about WandaVision. In my personal opinion, I thought the show was fantastic. Finale may have had a couple of narrative slip-ups, but I think the finale overall was still fantastic, and I think that it was a, a great uh, little peek at how all the other Disney Plus Marvel shows, the quality of them, like... Falcon and Winter Soldier is going to be mostly action-based, um, like espionage, spy, Winter Soldier-based. 
um, and only six episodes, but also like longer kind of like almost movie link episodes, which can be really cool. And so it gives me a lot of optimism regarding Marvel and the MCU. You know, they're only getting better and they're improving and they got this freaking giant framework laid out. It's awesome. So I am super excited. I'm really happy that my podcast is able to discuss things like this. Because honestly, I just need to get it out myself. <laughs> All right. Really quick, I'm going to take a five minute break, run to the bathroom, get a big sip of water, and then we're going to discuss, we're going to do a little bit of a discussion into um, uh, some video game news. So, like some, you know, upcoming games that I'm really excited about. Uh, the potential Switch uh, Pro, the upgraded Switch that is rumored to be released this year. And uh, yeah, maybe, and honestly, whatever you guys want to bring up related to those topics. If you have any questions, if you want to talk with me about WandaVision, please go ahead. Like, you're welcome to join the Twitch chat live while we're talking about this and um, and just ask me questions. And once I kind of get a thought done and, you know, like talk about the things that I want to talk about, get my opinions out there and and also make summaries and everything, you are welcome to talk in the chat, discuss what I'm talking about, discuss with me what your, your thoughts are, your opinions, if you like the show, if you hated the show. I mean, I would prefer if you liked the show, but <laughs> honestly, I can't change your opinion. Uh, only you can change your opinion. But regardless, you're welcome to talk to me about it. And I'd love to talk about it because I'd love to have these podcasts almost kind of be like discussions. So like, so be very like, we'll have like time like breaks where I'll look at some of what you're talking about in the chat and then we'll discuss that in like live. Or if these eventually, when these eventually go up on YouTube, uh, whatever format they go up in, you're welcome to put comments or questions in the comments there and then I could potentially discuss those next week and what my thoughts are on those, what, do you, what I think could happen with those theories or questions or whatever. Uh, thanks if sticking around. Thanks for sticking around. We are going to now discuss some of the thoughts on gaming news, kind of just like, you know, gaming industry news and what the, like, Honestly, what the future of gaming is going to look like. So, I mean, what 2021 is going to look like gaming-wise, just because there is a lot of stuff to talk about. And uh, I I won't go too much, because I don't want this podcast to be ridiculously long, but I still think it would be... I still, I still want to discuss this at least a little bit, because of the WandaVision discussion. We were discussing the entire show, so it went on uh, pretty long, and... Uh, I want to make sure that, like, we... I, I want to make sure, one, that this isn't incredibly long, and two, uh, we are able to discuss everything, at least pretty thoroughly, with enough time. So, uh, let me pause this music, and then... <clears throat> so, uh, first up, we have probably one of the most pervasive rumors in the MC or er, MCU <laughs> pervasive rumors in the gaming industry right now. Um, and it is the fact or the idea or the rumor that Nintendo is going to release an upgraded version of the Nintendo switch uh, or the, the switch pro as everyone has been calling it, you know, obviously, you know, PS4 pro switch pro, etc. Um, as kind of like a third version for their lineup of switches. So like, I think the initial rumors were like, you know, obviously upgrades, uh, hardware, um, and potentially being a, a, uh, TV only console, just like normal where you can't just take the switch out. Um, but now it seems, but now according to there have been rumors for months like for like the last year for i mean ever since the switch came out there were rumors of a switch pro but they really didn't get big recognition until like the last year or so or last like two years honestly um because they had like uh because everyone was like all right we love the switch it's one of it's a lot of people's favorite consoles now it's one of my favorite consoles now and we don't know 
um, and we didn't know anything about if they were going to release an up- upgrade just because the next gen of major, major consoles came out. Like, we have the PS5, and we have the Xbox Series X alongside their somewhat, um, alongside their counterparts, uh, where, like, the Xbox Series S is the cheaper but slightly lower power version of the Series X. Uh, it's only $300, same price as the Switch. And and then there's the PS... But the PS5 is mostly the same. It's just the difference between a disc version and a purely digital version. So, um, so like... And because those systems came out and they're incredibly powerful, I've got my PS5 literally right here next to me. I love the system. It is amazing. It's so fun to use. The games are great. Um, and the loading times. The loading times are so amazing. So Nintendo, Nintendo has always marched to the beat of their own drum. And they have not given a flying shit (laughs) about anyone else they do their own thing they don't care about the console wars they make their own games they make their games their own way they're very very protective of their ips and they care more about the game quality itself and the game itself rather than some other subject or some other areas of games like game uh nintendo cares more that a game is fun than if a game has a powerful story it it, it looks amazing like you know it looks super graphically realistic um they don't care about any of that at least i mean at least you know for a long time they didn't but maybe when it came to the next gen of consoles they started to realize that the industry was progressing and they could potentially be left behind. Nintendo is never going to be left behind because Nintendo is seriously one of the highest grossing companies ever. Like they're re- or at least um media companies. And they like but the fact that the Switch is such an amazing console but hardware-wise it is fairly behind all of their consoles have been kind of like a step behind like Sony and Xbox or Sony and Microsoft in like power level because they care more about the gameplay and that games are fun rather than the power of the system and exploiting the power of that system to its full potential and um uh and like really pushing things and doing deep and dark stories and powerful stories with with uh pop like amazing hollywood voice casts like uh and they don't care about that but they know that everyone loves that stuff on the other systems and maybe they think oh they have the other systems if they want that but but nintendo still thrives on its own somehow they still thrive in making their games amazing even if some of them are story pretty basic like uh nintendo switch is one of my favorite systems ever and the fact that they changed up a lot of their games mechanics alongside the switch means that a lot of franchises kind of got revitalizations and i'm not here to talk about pokemon today because that didn't really get a big revitalization i'm here to talk about the switch in general so um we won't we won't talk about that much <laughs> uh but most of the games got like most of big franchises got revitalizations in their format in their gameplay um but a lot of the time the story stayed the same mario odyssey was a big change in the gameplay of the previous mario um mainline series the 3d mainline series uh in the fact that you don't have to leave a world and do a specific mission to get one star you just it's an more open world exploratory thing where you find the moons instead of stars around the map by doing various objectives whether they be big or small and and then like breath of the wild uh did a whole open world game where um you know you could do anything you could you could walk right up to hyrule castle in your freaking underwear with a stick and challenge ganon you're gonna die but you can do it (laughs) you could do it in that order like 
uh you and like you know so that obviously they encourage you to play the rest of the game and power yourself up and get yourself good armor and weapons and then challenge ganon but the overall story is still the same mario odyssey peach gets kidnapped by bowser mario has to rescue her sure it involves the fact that they have he's trying to just force her into a wedding and he has wedding planners trying to stop mario the 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 rabbits or whatever and uh or the brutals that they called them but overall the story was pretty basic and at the end it's kind of funny because she rejects that's where the the difference lies and i I like kind of how that happened where she rejects both mario and bowser because like well no i'm not gonna like you bowser because you're bowser and you keep kidnapping me but she also said no to mario who always rescues her and she went off on her own with her you know own little cappy ghost and you know explored the world and that was a kind of cool little detail um but regardless the story was fairly similar besides the ending breath of the wild same thing it's like the main difference was that the triforce never appeared in game like well the triforce technically somewhat appeared uh when in relation to zelda since she is effectively the like the I think in the lore, it's like, I don't know much about some of the older Zeldas because I only played Link to the Link Between Worlds and Breath of the Wild. I've actually never played a lot of the original Zeldas. That's why I was hoping the most recent Nintendo Direct for the, uh, the Zelda anniversary would announce some sort of collector's pack like they did with the Super Mario 3D All-Stars. But maybe that's in the future. I don't know. Like, you know, uh, Ocarina, Majora, Wind Waker, Skyward Sword, all that stuff. Uh, Twilight Princess, all that stuff. But like, but regardless, um, they, like, the story is basically the same. Uh, Link has to power up, rescue Zelda from Ganon, or help Gan- or help Zelda destroy Ganon. Because most of the time they work together because, you know, they represent Link as the Triforce of Courage, and, um, and Zelda as the Triforce of Wisdom because she's, like, the physical embodiment of the goddess Hylia. I think that's what it is in the lore. Um... And also always has the Triforce of Wisdom. But there wasn't really any major Triforce connections in Breath of the Wild. It was very solo. It was very by itself. That was the main difference. But overall, it was still fight Ganon. Like, it wasn't an individual villain. It wasn't a unique new villain. Uh, It was just, you know, Bowser, Ganon, same thing. So Nintendo, I love Nintendo to death, and they make their games amazingly. They usually, they pride gameplay and quality over story and stuff like that overall. But I do think that they need to take a step forward and maybe try to change things a little bit. Try to be a little riskier, take story. Like, I think the fans will still love them for it. Nintendo's had a couple bad steps in the last couple years. Uh, there's like that whole free melee thing that I didn't really participate much in. I didn't know much about. Um, but uh, I know it was, you know, it was a really bad move, especially publicly. But, you know, but they don't let up because Nintendo don't give a shit. They, they do what they want to do. And they are super protective of their IPs. Like, the fact that Mario was in, was like, appeared in older games, like... Hell, I remember as a kid, he appeared in NBA Street. I think that's where it was. Like, the NBA Street basketball game, or the GameCube version, where you could play as Mario, Luigi, and Peach. And that was weird. Like, because that game is like, you know, it's a street game, so it's like, it's less, you know, formal NBA rules, and, and you know, a little bit more aggressive. Um, so, like, but nowadays, they are super protective of their IP. And, like... Like, there's a reason Mario has only ever appeared in a fighting game in Smash Brothers. Like, like I mean, maybe if there's another game that he's appeared in that's, like, a you know, official main release, big publicly released game. I know about um, whatever that one thing is called that, like, uh, kind of, like, more retro-looking style game uh, that's based off of Smash Brothers and it's got, like, Ori and Shovel Knight in it, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, and people put mods in it for all the different characters. But uh, regardless, uh, officially, he has, like, never appeared in any other fighting game. Like, you know, it's not like Mario's ever going to appear. I mean, obviously, Mario's never going to appear in Mortal Kombat. But, like, you know, there's the PlayStation All-Stars game. Like, you would think that maybe 
especially with Smash Brothers, like Smash Brothers being like one of the greatest fighting games ever made, like the fact that they're introducing third party characters, um, maybe he would appear in other things, but no, Nintendo's super, 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 super protective of their IP and their IPs. So it'll be interesting to see how the future goes with that. But back to the Switch, the Switch itself and the new potential Switch. Um, they, so the rumor is, so there have been rumors of a Switch Pro for a long time. Um, and, you know, leakers saying, oh, there might be a Switch Pro, it's going to be a TV-only console, or um, blah, blah, blah. But nothing was ever confirmed, there were never any public announcements, never any confirmations on Nintendo Spark, because Nintendo's super secretive. And, but now, just recently, uh, there was a Bloomberg article, I believe, uh, that was, like, talking about how there was a potential upgraded Switch coming uh, with, like, uh, like, you know, all the updated features that we were expecting, almost, like, 4K capability and, like, more power. Uh, and, like, and the screen will be a little bigger, so, like, do I have my, oh, I do have my Switch with me. So, like, so it would be, like, uh, according to some of the reports, the screen on the Switch itself is going to be bigger. It's going to more encompass, like, so we have this, like, black bar that surrounds the screen of the Switch. Um, apparently, the Switch Pro would actually just encompass this entire box. It wouldn't have these black lines around it, this casing uh, that holds the screen in so it would be a bigger uh i believe it was like a samsung oled display that's what this uh article is telling me seven inch seven inch screen larger than the 6.2 inch of the of this one um and there's going to be like you know more power more uh like a fork it out could output like on tv when docked to a tv it could output 4k resolution um have better chips maybe have a decent battery life battery life is definitely going to be a big thing just because it has more power means more battery usage and in that small casing it's definitely hard to do that so it might not have the best battery life but we'll see um regardless a lot of people think that this could potentially if this is actually true and bloomberg is a pretty reliable source when it comes to industry stuff so um if this is true, then upcoming games in the Nintendo roster could be core could be connected to or correlate with a release of a Switch Pro. Also, I forgot to mention that the biggest rumor is that the Switch Pro would not actually be called the Switch Pro. It would be called the Super Nintendo Switch, which is a super cute name. Because, obviously, it's a callback to the SNES being the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, uh, being the sequel of the original Nintendo Entertainment System. And so it's a huge callback to that, and that would be... It's a wonderful uh, idea, and it's a great way to... It's... As long as they don't call it the new Nintendo Switch, we're all good. Because Nintendo has been stupid with that, and they still do it sometimes. They have the new Pokemon Snap game, and... I don't know why they do this, but it's like, we're going to do it. The new Nintendo 3DS XL. No, it's like, so, so, and they're making hell for us freaking retail workers at GameStops who have to be like, all right, so you want the DS? You want the new 3DS XL? It's like, yeah, can I get a new 3DS XL? No, wait, I want a used new 3DS XL. Like, it's like, God damn it, Nintendo. <laughs> but uh, I hope. If they call it the Super Switch, it makes it so much easier naming-wise. We don't have to worry about the new. It's like, I want a new Super Nintendo Switch. Or I want a used Super Nintendo Switch. It's like, ah, uh, so much easier. They better call it that. But if they do, if it is a thing. Um, but regardless, they think a lot of, alongside the release of this Super Nintendo Switch, uh, would be the release of the big games that we're all expecting. So... Uh, Breath of the Wild 2, the sequel, could potentially be an even bigger game than Breath of the Wild was. 
Then we have uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus, which is supposed to be kind of like a Breath of the Wild version of Pokemon. I don't imagine that. It's definitely taking after Breath of the Wild and potentially evolving the Pokemon series to a better uh, version of itself, which, you know, I told I said I wasn't going to talk about it much because I have lots and lots of thoughts about that. We'll be here for another hour if I want to talk about that. Um, and and basically, like, you know, the more open world, the easier catching, the easier battling, smoother systems, stuff like that. And... It could be related to a Switch Pro to potentially handle it, but it was a very early version of Pokemon Arceus that we were showed because we got the freaking like Chingling who was not even fully animated in the trailer. Like it looked like a screen, uh, it looked like a slideshow, like just like do 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 floating. Like it wasn't just like it was freaking like you know not even fully animated, and um. And so, like, and very possible even Metroid 4, because Metroid 4, we haven't heard anything about because they were making Metroid 4, they announced it, and then they were like, all right, we don't like how Metroid 4 is turning out. We're starting over, starting from scratch. So that means there's definitely a lot more time probably needed for that game. Um, it'd be really interesting to see the Digino gaming after Metroid 4 finally comes out and we learn everything about it. But um, I've never played a Metroid game before, so I really want to try it. Uh, some some of the old games and maybe uh like just you know see how that all turns out um anyway so yeah so that's basically it with the super nintendo switch with the rumors the rumor is that they're going to come out towards the end of this year um my guess maybe four hundred dollars for it if it's a real thing uh and then we'll see i mean it'll be really cool to see how that all progresses but I'm definitely going to buy it if it comes out. Um, So now I just wanted to talk about a couple more things. So this week, I think, yeah. So um, this past week, I believe it was on Tuesday, I think it was, uh, was the PlayStation State of Play. So they announced a whole bunch of, or they were talking about projects upcoming and did some trailers. They announced one of my the one of the most important things that I'm excited about is the Final Fantasy VII remake, uh, Intergrade, which is the PS5 version of the game, plus the Yuffie or not Yuffie Yuffie. Actually, I should say it correctly, um, the Yuffie DLC, and um. Uh, with the new character Sonon and potentially the reemergence of Weiss, who's apparently a character from uh, Dirge of Cerberus. I only, my only experience with Final Fantasy VII and my only experience with Final Fantasy right now is Final Fantasy VII, having played Final Fantasy VII Remake and then almost finished playing Final Fantasy VII Original on my Switch right now, which, uh, so I know the majority of the story. And. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they progress that and how the Final Fantasy VII Remake universe kind of, like, progresses, but I love that game. I personally think Final Fantasy VII Remake should have gotten Game of the Year, but don't bring that up. Don't don't you be talking in the comments. Don't, I don't want any trolls or annoying people in the comments saying, Last of Us Part Two sucked and it didn't deserve anything. No. I believe it deserved the awards that it got, and I believe Laura Bailey did not deserve any of the harassment that she got for playing Abby and... Um, so I, so if you are a hater, I don't want you here. <laughs> you can have an opinion on Last of Us Part Two. You don't have to like it. It doesn't have to be your favorite game of all time. I still think it deserved Game of the Year. Um, I would have preferred Final Fantasy VII. I think they both deserve Game of the Year. I think Ghost of Tsushima deserved Game of the Year as well, but with all of them up against each other, my personal opinion was that Final Fantasy VII Remake deserved Game of the Year over all of them. That's my personal opinion. Uh, but it is what it is. And Last of Us Part 2 won Game of the Year. There's no rigging. There's no conspiracy theory. Last of Us Part 2 just won. So, um, anyway. Uh, Final Fantasy Sim Remake Intergrade with the Yuffie DLC. Apparently the Yuffie DLC is only going to be on PS5, which is relatively disappointing since not everyone has a PS5 yet. And who knows if anyone, if a lot more people are going to have a PS5 
by the time um, the DLC comes out, which is uh, June. I believe it's... I have written down uh, June 10th. So it'll be interesting to see how that progresses. Maybe they'll change it and maybe... It'll actually they'll have like a downgraded version, but apparently you could only get the DLC on the PS5 because apparently the DLC is like utilizing the PS5, which is weird because you would think they would just release it on the PS4 as well. And the one year exclusivity agreement is up uh, as as soon as the release date comes by. So um, Final Fantasy VII Remake will probably be getting another release on the newer consoles. Um Maybe an Xbox One version, uh, and maybe an Xbox uh, Series X version, but and maybe a PC version too. But we don't really know, so because um, we don't know those details yet. Regardless, um, I'm super excited about that because Final Fantasy VII Remake was, remake was amazing, and playing as Yuffie looks amazing, and the new character Sonon seems like a new new character that's completely new to the lore, and will be interesting. the The gameplay looks awesome because of. It looks like Yuffie and Sonon combine their attacks in some ways, which I think wasn't in, which wasn't in remake the first, like you know original remake, and uh, so so like team up attacks and stuff, so that looks awesome, and I'm super excited about that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and then and then my other most exciting. The other game I'm most excited for is Deathloop, which is which is like supposedly Bioshock and Dishonored mixed with Groundhog Day. And it seems like because like I think Returnal is also doing a Groundhog Day thing, which is funny that two games came out at the exact same time with like that exact same uh, premise in a way. But <laughs> but Deathloop looks amazing just because it has like influence. It's made by Arcane Studios, which made the Dishonored group, I think. I think it made the yeah. Um so having, you know, powers in one hand, weapon in the other, it's super BioShock, super Dishonored. And um and I love it. It's so amazing. Like it looks beautiful. It looks so like kind of like comic booky and the, the cast looks great. The gameplay looks fun. The Bioshock influences are what, you know, really drive me. Because Bioshock, the series, is one of my favorite game series of all time. If you've seen me, I just finished Bioshock on the, on the Twitch channel. And might play Infinite on the channel. Might not play Bioshock 2 on the channel. I still love Bioshock 2, by the way. Uh, it's, you know, it's still a great game. Just not as good as the original Bioshock and Infinite. But, um... But it's still a good game. It does not suck like anyone says it does. Um, it, but regardless, yeah, I, I like Deathloop because of the inspiration it probably takes from Bioshock and Dishonored. So, um, it definitely look up the trailers for those because those are my two favorites. I could probably play them. I don't know. I'd have to test out whether or not I can play trailers on here without potentially getting, you know, copyright struck or or something uh but regardless uh i'm really excited and uh we'll see how that turns out um more closely closer to right now because we're in march right now and the closest releases that we have coming are like new pokemon snap and returnal which i believe come out on the same day um i'm sure i'm missing some other game uh that might be coming out within the next month but a month or two, but I I can't remember exactly at the moment. <clears throat> I have a list here of all the games that are coming up. And let me pull this up real quick. <clears throat> yeah, so we got Returnal, we got New Pokemon Snap, Deathloop, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Back for Blood. Then later in the year, June and on, you know, Back for Blood... Uh, Solar Ash, Kina, uh, Far Cry 6, FNAF Security Breach. Uh, yeah, all all this, all these cool games that are supposed to be coming out this year. And um, I am pondering whether or not which of these games I want to play on the channel. Um, because 
I think right now my next goal of the channel is to start playing Control on the PS5 because they had it uh, on the PS Plus uh, monthly thing, the Ultimate Edition too. So I want to play Control because apparently it was a very underrated game. It didn't get a lot of the recognition it deserved. Um, and it looks like a lot of fun. Superpowers, battling people, it looks pretty fun. So... Uh, I'm probably going to play that next on the on the stream, but upcoming, so, and I want to play it and try to get it done before, you know, another big game comes out. So we got new Pokemon Snap Returnal coming out at the end of April. Um, Returnal being another Groundhog Day thing, but it's like astronaut or something crash lands on a planet or maybe crash lands back home. It's supposed to be some kind of like supernatural Groundhog Day horror thing in a way. Um... But the gameplay looks like a lot of fun. Seems very fast paced and moving. Kind of, kind of looks like Control in a way. Um, uh, and then uh, we have Resident Evil Eight Village. I never played Resident Evil Seven. In fact, I've never played a Resident Evil game. Um, I didn't play the remakes. I just saw them played. Games have never really been my forte. I have watched like you know Markiplier and Jack uh, you know, play all the way through. Resident Evil 7. I know that story pretty well, honestly. I've watched them play it several times just because they're they're great playthroughs and they're they're awesome. But uh and I just don't like playing horror games sometimes because I'm a bit of a wimp. Uh I don't necessarily play games for the jump scares or to be scared. I play games to play games and have fun. However, being a streamer, I might be a little bit more inclined to do that, especially if people want it. If you guys are interested in seeing me play Resident Evil 8, I will consider playing it on stream. And um, and most of these games, Deathloop, I am absolutely playing on stream. Final Fantasy VII Remake, I'm absolutely playing on stream, or the DLC at least. Maybe I'll do a regular playthrough of it, but I don't know. We'll have to find out. And then, uh, but Resident Evil 8 comes out not too long before Depth Loop, so I might just kind of, not, I might not do Resident Evil 8. However, since we don't know when it's supposed to come out, FNAF Security Breach. I love the FNAF series. Five Nights at Freddy's is what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I've never played a FNAF game, but I love the FNAF series, because I've seen Markiplier play it, I've seen Game Theory theorize on it and play it. It's just such a cool series and such a unique series that really just grew and, you know, got the attention it deserved. And um, and Security Breach looks like a whole new generation for the franchise, and it looks amazing. The trailer looks amazing. Definitely look it up. But it is a horror game, probably involving lots of jump scares as, as per the series' history. And um, I would consider playing it on the stream. You know, if you want to see me scream at, you know, a jump scare. Uh, but uh, I don't know how I'd react because I haven't really done that much before. So, um, yeah. So you guys are welcome to talk to me, ask me questions about that. Uh, let me know if you want to see me play those games. Um, <clears throat> regardless. Uh, yeah. So I think we're going to start wrapping up the podcast. Um, so... For next, if I, so I'm, I'm really liking this. I like this format. I like being able to talk about everything. Um, I'm going to take, I, I, I will try to take down news as it comes out throughout the week. That's going to be by formula. It'll be take down some news if there is any, and then try to figure out if I want to uh, figure out if there's stuff to talk about. And then a lot of it will also be Marvel discussion uh, and all that stuff. And... We'll see about how I handle some of the, you know, some of the games coming out. Like, you know, talk about the gaming news. And, yeah, if you guys like this format, if you like this podcast, um, I really appreciate it. Uh, following me on Twitch, following me, uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel, uh, all under the same name, Downloadable Connor. Um, what I... If you could, you know, I would 100% appreciate that. Just make sure to hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, watch my videos, recommend them to other people. Uh, and you're welcome to come in to the stream when I record this, which will hopefully be on Saturdays earlier in the day. Um, 
we will see how that all turns out because this is this is a new step for me this is a new format that i wanted to try and maybe do weekly and uh, i'm really excited to see if i can uh, do it more and just talk about things because i love doing this i love talking about games i love talking about movies and marvel and superheroes and geek stuff and just fun so um thank you so much for listening guys if you listen to this whole thing i literally love you guys so much if you thank you so much um if you're not following me on twitch or if you're not subscribed to me on youtube please hit the follow button or the subscribe button wherever you're watching this um if you haven't already and um yeah i if you have questions uh, in the comments um feel free to ask me questions feel free to um Feel free to give your theories about Marvel stuff, like the WandaVision stuff we talked about. Feel free to tell me what your what the game you're most excited about coming out is. Um, and, you know, maybe if you if you say, like, oh, you could play this on stream, like, you know, make me recommendations. Like, I, anything like that. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, and uh, I'd love to keep doing this. So thank you so much. I really love you guys, and I appreciate you guys, anyone who's listening right now, from now and in the future. And um, I hope this format is good. I lo- I'm working to improve it. I want to improve it. And um, thank you so much. I will, and I will see you guys uh, sometime soon. Bye.